Top shares are soaring in overtime after beating on the top and bottom lines. Let's bring in Corey Tarlow of Jeffries. Shares are about 13% right now, Corey. It was a beat and raise quarter for Gap, and this really is a turnaround story uh, for the company. So, so where would you say we are in in that process? I'd say we're probably in the early to middle innings here. This is the first quarter now in quite some time where the company's actually pointed to market share gains across all of their brands. So that's Gap, that's Old Navy, which accounts for most of the sales and profits, Banana Republic, which has been struggling for quite a while, and Athleto, which just recently comp positively. So I think you're still in the earlier stages of this transformation. You have a new CEO who's focused on reinvigorating these brands. His name is Richard Dixon. He was appointed just about a year ago, or a year and a half ago. And he's done a really nice job of driving some brand buzz and reinvigorating momentum in each of these brands while also driving better margins. And that's been a really big focus for us as analysts and investors you know, on a lot of conference calls that I've been on. Um, and it's nice to see that in the quarter that they reported today that they've seen some really, really significant flow through uh, on the sales beat in the operating margin today. Okay, so they got a ways to go to get to 52-week highs, which would be near 30 bucks a share. How much more do they have to show you uh, for you to get off your hold rating? I think our focus going forward is really on two key aspects of this business. It's on market share and it's on margins. So we've seen the market share gains thus far, but I think we need to see a little bit more of it to really convince us that what we're seeing is sustainable. There's been a lot of noise in retail over the last month or two. We've had hurricanes. We had October, which was one of the driest months on record, at least in the Northeast. Um, and we've also seen a lot of excess inventory in retail. And combine that with the fact that now, in this holiday season, we have five less selling days between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we think that in an environment where people are prioritizing what they need over what they want, i.e. shifting more into food and consumables versus discretionary and general merchandise, mm -hmm. you really have to have the right product at the right price. And in an environment where, again, going into the holiday, which is a shortened time frame versus yeah. the prior year, it's going to get promotional. So you really have to be careful in terms of straddling the line of driving sales at the expense of margin. And this holiday season is going to be really telling for that, we think. Okay. So in light of that, we did get results from Ross stores as well, the hour which you cover. Those shares are up higher, even though it was, a, it was a more mixed print, presumably in part because margins were better than expected. How is Ross stores positioned for that environment that you just laid out? So... Ross Stores has done a very, very nice job o over a multi-decade time horizon of continuing to grow stores, um, gaining more and more customers. It's just that recently what we've seen is, and with their strategy is that they've decided to embark on a strategy where they're acquiring more branded merchandise. And along with that, when you acquire more branded merchandise, which is mostly opportunistic and in closeout markets, so these are Brands like Nike, it's their excess inventory that, that Ross is looking to acquire. Mm. This comes at lower margins. Okay. And so this is a strategy that they're embarking on where we think, while it will potentially help drive sales, it does come at the expense of profits okay. over well, time. 